Owning a football club is one of my biggest dreams, but I'm broke and I can't afford to buy a football club. And so to fulfill this dream of mine, I created my very own club in FIFA. The goal is to become the world's best club owner, but this is not going to be easy. Apart from making big transfers and helping this club succeed on the pitch, off the pitch we're going to have to get sponsors, brands and upgrade our stadiums and a lot more. But if I can take my very own club from EFL League 2 all the way to the Premier League, I can call myself the world's best club owner. And so the journey begins. Our first task is to choose a name for our club. S2GFC sounds about right, but what's our nickname gonna be? Man United are called the Red Devils, Arsenal are known as the Gunners, S2GFC, tough cookies, sounds good, intimidating, probably not, but we'll run with it. It's now time to choose our stadium, our home ground. This is where the S2GFC fans are going to be coming in in numbers and supporting the club. Well, since we're a teeny tiny club, there are not going to be many fans coming in. And since I'm broke, we can only afford the smallest stadium possible. But hey, that's fine. One day we're going to have a bigger stadium than Old Trafford. We're now going to reveal our new kits for the season. But we need a kit sponsor. I mean, I can't be making the kits. Thankfully, Umbro and New Balance were interested. Looks like they saw the potential in S2GFC. The deal with New Balance was actually solid. They were giving us 4 million for our transfer budget and we need every bit of cash we can get. And so the next thing you know, I've signed the deal with New Balance and they're going to be our first ever kit manufacturer. It's time to unveil our new kits for the season. Since we're a small club, it looks like New Balance didn't put all that effort into our kits. But hey, it's fine. We're an EFL League 2. This was expected. Maybe one day when we become one of the best clubs in the world, we'll have our very own exclusive kits. Time to to meet the squad, the future legends, the players that are going to win us the Champions League over this next decade. Our squad was looking really average, but we did have a few players that had a bit of potential. Callum Berry, there was something about him. In a few training sessions and games, I noticed he's, he's got that vision with him. And he's got a cracking long shot as well. But there were a few more players that looked really exciting, particularly Max Holmes. My man had the height of Olivier Giroud, but the pace and dribbling ability of Raheem Sterling, the weirdest player I've seen but somehow he was amazing. We also had David Tyler, who looked to be a really good goal scorer, and that's something we need if we want to get promoted from EFL League 2 to, of course, League 1. But even with all that, it's still not enough. We're going to have to make transfers, academy stuff as well. Apart from the existing players in our squad, I noticed we had a gem of a player in the youth academy. I don't know what he's doing in a League 2 club's academy, but Raul Lopez, he was special. I call him the next deco. It was now finally done time to play our first ever game with S2 GFC. Getting a win could be a huge morale boost. And guess what? Max Holmes created history. But I quickly realized that this team was still not good enough and to get promoted, we need to spend that 4 million we got from the New Balance team. And so it's time for me as the club owner to make some signings and improve the team. First, after a bit of scouting, I signed Ibsen Rossi for the center back position. He looks like a rock at the back. Next up, a goalkeeper was a must because our existing keeper was pretty average. And so I signed Edward McGinty. Apparently, they're calling him a penalty specialist, so that's going to be awesome to see. With these defensive reinforcements, our defense was looking better and we were racking up some points. But I feel we still needed some reinforcements in our attack. I mean, Max Holmes and David Tyler are scoring goals for fun, but we need more. And so we make a signing of a very exciting winger with a lot of talent, Dara Burns. They say he's the Irish Messi. Probably not, but he's good. And I'll tell you this, instantly, Dara Burns added so much to this team. We were now in a good position to secure promotion. I got a bit greedy and thought, you know what, one more signing could really help out the club. So as a free agent, I signed Homam Emmert for the left back spot. With that, our team was so good. But only later I realized that I made a massive mistake. I didn't realize how much money we were spending and now the club is on the verge of bankruptcy. As a club owner, I've completely overspent our budget. And if we don't find additional sponsors for this club, we could enter administration it was now time to hunt for new sponsors, but since we're a teeny tiny club, nobody wants to sponsor us. And so my only option was to go to New Balance again, the, the company that sponsored our kits. I begged them so much and they just were so hesitant to give me any money, but finally they were willing to give me 1 million. And with that 1 million, we were able to sort out the contract issues, the youth academy payments and everything else. And that basically saved us from bankruptcy. With the finances of the club now sorted, it was time to focus on one thing. 
nothing and that was to get promotion. Tyler and Holmes had become a lethal duo up top. They were scoring in almost every game. But this is the game that could decide who wins the league. If we can beat AFC Wimbledon, we'll win the league and get promoted to the next division. Very releasing it for Rose, really becoming a good provider. And he might just provide again. And in a game to probably win the title, David Tyler ends up scoring. We're coming for the title. No, 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 no. Wimbledon are trying to come back and they might just do that. They get a goal and they're keeping their title chances alive as well. Oh, once again, leading the ball to Tyler. Tyler should score this. Oh, it's so lucky. But sometimes you do need a bit of luck. David Tyler puts it in the back of the net. 2-1. Yes, guys, in just our first season we've been promoted to efl league one there you go boys there you go it tastes like promotion yeah! it's definitely time to celebrate but remember our goal is to be a premier league club winning the champions league and everything the journey has only just begun we've now made it to efl league one but our goal now is to somehow get promoted to the championship but it is not going to be easy to build a team that's ready for the championship it's going to cost us money the good thing is after an impressive debut season it seems like we've got a ton of sponsor offers puma was by far the best one they were offering us eight million and a bonus if we get ourselves promoted i instantly signed the contract with that we unveiled our new puma kits for the season hopefully these kits will bring us luck and get us promoted to the championship after looking at our current squad which by the way has grown leaps and bounds in just one season players like max holmes david tyler lopez berry are all looking better than ever but it's still clear we need a world-class defender someone to partner with ibsen rossi a veteran who can really inspire the squad and after a bit of scouting i found out that Giorgio Chiellini is available as a free agent. Will he be interested in joining our teeny tiny club? It took a lot of convincing, but after offering him a club record-breaking salary, he was willing to accept. With our defense improved for the season, we now need to inject some creativity into our midfield. So I managed to sign Job Bellingham, the little brother of Jude Bellingham, for 890000 and it looks like an absolute bargain. If he can get anywhere near the level of his elder brother, we might have a player that could become a club legend for us. We we still need to make more signings, but for now it's time for our EFL League 1 debut. However, we quickly realized that this league is a lot harder than League 2. It took a Callum Berry screamer to get our first win in the league. Berry? Oh, that is brilliant! That is brilliant! Goal of the season contender already! I realized that although Tyler and Holmes are goal machines, we need a winger who can supply them. Burns is perfect on the right side, but on the left side, we don't really have anyone like that. And so negotiations began with Manchester United for Alejandro Garnacho. Now, now, I know what you guys are thinking. How can we afford Garnacho? We can't. And that's why we're trying a loan deal for him. That's the only way we can sign Garnacho. And Manchester United were willing to loan him to us. So there you go. Garnacho to S2GFC. For our final signing of the window, we spent 4.4 million on Nathan Patterson from Everton. That's our right back position sorted. With that, I believe we have the team to fight for promotion. But boy, I was wrong. The level was a lot higher and we were conceding silly goals and we were down to 10th after 18 games. To make it worse, new signing good Nacho was having a stinker of a season. He had yet to score a single goal for us. And soon I received a message from him. He clearly wasn't able to adapt to life in the third division of English football. It was a lot more physical than he expected. Ultimately, after discussions with Manchester United, we decided it was best for him to go back to Manchester and continue his career there. Problem is, we now need someone to step up in his absence and deliver. Otherwise, there's no chance for getting promoted. Tyler and Holmes stepped up big time with goals, but so did Iñaki Jimenez from the Youth Academy who really came alive. We had climbed up to third in the league in the fight for promotion. The January transfer window is here and we now need to find a replacement for Garnacho, otherwise getting promoted is going to be tough. Our luck was incredible as the Brazilian sensation Paulinho was available for free. He had played in the Bundesliga and for definitely big clubs. There was no way I was missing up on an opportunity like this. We offered him a solid contract and he signed it. A signing of this quality for an EFL League One club is a statement. Paulinho's first goal for us was a crucial strike in the FA Cup. With our team now looking better than ever, we had somehow made it to the round of 16 in the FA Cup. Can you imagine an EFL League One club doing so well in the FA Cup? It's unheard of. But unfortunately, we had drawn Spurs and this was looking like the end of the road of our FA Cup journey. Remember guys, we're a small teeny tiny club in the EFL League One. We can't compete against these powerhouses but then we witnessed an all
all-timer FA Cup campaign from Dara Burns. That would be insane. Dara Burns, are you kidding me? First three minutes. And he's playing in an unbelievable level of form as he goes for it again. And he's done it again. What? This man had single-handedly dragged us to an FA Cup final. How incredible that is. The date was set. S2G FC versus Manchester United FA Cup final at Wembley. While we were dominating in the FA Cup, we also managed to get the job done in the league. Promotion had been secured, but we still had a chance to win our first major trophy, which would be a statement. Can you imagine the sponsor money coming in if we get to win the FA Cup? The game started off evenly matched with chances at both ends, but it was Manchester United who strike first. We tried everything to mount a comeback, but it really wasn't to be. It really was sad to lose a final like this, but the truth is we overachieved for an EFL League One club. Regardless, I'm sure this is an experience that's going to build a character for the likes of Lopez, Berry, Holmes, and all the players we've got. The focus now is on next season, where we're going to be in the championship, just one step away from the Premier League. Over these last couple of seasons, the club has developed an incredible fan base, and hence it's time for a stadium upgrade. We can finally fit about 10,000 fans in our stadium. Being in the championship also means bigger sponsors. We've managed to negotiate a deal with KSI and Logan Paul's energy drink Prime. That's right, we're gonna have Prime on our kits. And look at the Prime Edition kits, they look absolutely fantastic. Also, as the club owner, I think I need to release real-life official S2G FC kits, and that's exactly what we've done. You guys can support the channel, support the content, support the world's best club, well, we'll become that soon. By getting yourself an S2GFC kit. Stocks are low, but you guys can get yours now. S2GFC.com, links in the description. And use code S2G and get yourself a cheeky 10% discount. Our budget for the season is 18 million, which seems to be good for a championship club. The goal is to secure direct promotion for a third season in a row. And ultimately, this would lead to us becoming a Premier League goal. At the start, this was one of my dreams. Our team continues to grow, but one thing you'll notice is that Georgina Chiellini has retired. We always knew he was only going to be a short-term signing, but it's still sad to see him go because he contributed a lot in us getting promoted. He's always going to be a part of this club's legacy. Our first game in the championship made me realize, wow, the level is incredibly higher here. The truth is, we need to make investments if we want to get promoted. To replace Chiellini, we decided to sign Scalvini for 9.3 million. The next transfer I'm going to make is a striker because we need a bit of depth. Holmes and Tyler can't keep carrying the team. Dane Scarlett is the chosen one, although affording him is going to be a real challenge. But after a bit of negotiation with Spurs, we secured a loan to buy deal on him, which is incredible. Dane Scarlett instantly repaid us with goals and we found ourselves being second in the championship. But then unfortunately, the growing schedule of the championship led to an injury crisis. Both Callum Berry and Raul Lopez were injured and they were our key midfielders. We of course started dropping down the table and in desperate need for a new midfielder. The problem the problem was that after all the signings we made, we only had about 6 million left. A free agent signing seems to be the only way to survive. The truth is, there was always a certain Spanish magician available. That's right, Isco. A player like Isco joining S2GFC would be tremendous. This would be our biggest signing yet, and I know he's a bit old, but we saw how Chiellini was good for us. Isco is going to give us a few more years, and I think he's got what it takes to get us promoted to the Premier League. We had to make him our highest paid player, but it's done, Isco joins S2G FC. Isco made his debut with a ridiculous long shot. He then also scored one of the club's greatest ever goals. Isco had fired us right back into contention for promotion. But then soon, disaster struck. Spurs were in need for a striker, and what did they decide to do? They recalled Dane Scarlett. Just like a Nacho last season, we've absolutely been shafted. What are we going to do without our goal poacher? Dane Scarlett's been a key reason why we're in contention for promotion. I've been rotating him with Ty and Holmes and all three of them have been contributing massively. This is kind of the problem of loan deals. I think I'm going to shy away from them in the future. But the truth is with just 2 million left, what other option we've got? Right now we need a short term signing which can only be a loan to fill the gap left by Scarlett. So for a temporary solution, I'm signing Balogan for 6 months. It's just a loan deal. We know he's going to leave but I'm hoping until then he can contribute. Now with all the transfer drama done, the January window shutting, our goal is clear. Making it to 
the Premier League. Even though our new signings like Isco contributed immensely, it was the OG stars like Holmes, Tyler, Berry, and Lopez who had really upped their game. And because of them, we were now in a position to win the championship. If we can beat Watford, we're gonna win the league. Lovely ball in for Dara Burns to do something. He's gonna look for Tyler, who's found a bit of space, strikes it well. Oh my God, how? How did David Tyler squeeze that in? He's a special, special player. Yes, guys, we've just won the championship in three seasons. We've taken our very own created club all the way to the Premier League. But I'll tell you this, this is just the start. We're now officially one of the top 20 clubs in England. That's right, we're going to be playing in the Premier League this season. And the cool thing is, our team continues to grow. I mean, look at Berry, Lopez, and of course, David Tyler. They're already looking good enough to compete at the highest level. Well, maybe that's why they're out here securing modeling deals, especially Max Holmes. I'm telling you, the Premier League hasn't started and the lifestyle has already got to them. Being in the Premier League does mean that we get access to bigger sponsor deals. It's time for me, as a club owner, to negotiate the best possible deals. Puma had upped their offer and I was almost about to sign with them, but then I got a cheeky call from Adidas. Adidas were willing to offer us a record-breaking £25 million contract. This money could help us make the signings to survive in the Premier League. Plus, it's Adidas. You know they're going to hook us up with some amazing kits. And of course, I signed the deal and just as expected, the Adidas kits were amazing. Before we get into making new transfers, our first task at the club is to offer new contracts to our existing players. We're now in the Premier League. Of course, players like Lopez, Berry, Tyler, Holmes all deserve a wage bump. It's time to reward them with proper contracts. If we now want to remain as a Premier League club, we've got to make signings that reflect that. Remember Dane Scarlett? He was scoring goals for fun for us. It was such a shame that Spurs recalled him and we couldn't make the most out of him. Now that we're a Premier League club, I think it's time we make a move and bring Dane Scarlett back to where he belongs. After some extremely stingy negotiation tactics, we managed to sign Dane Scarlett for just 16.5 million. This transfer could be huge for us. Remember, every penny we spend counts. And I think with Dane Scarlett, we've made the most out of our money. Next up, we also sign Rico Lewis to give us some depth in the fullback position. Our team now was looking better than ever. I believe we've got what it takes to survive the drop. Maybe even push for a top half finish. Okay, maybe I'm reaching a bit. But just as everything was going well, disaster struck. Real Madrid wanted one of our players. And when Real Madrid wants something, often they get it. Madrid had put in an offer of 80 million for Dara Burns. This would be a club record sale. And in all honesty, we can definitely use that money efficiently. But selling Dara Burns, the player that put in that tremendous FA Cup run, almost winning us the title single-handedly i'm just uh, I, I just find it difficult he's the kind of player that could lead us to future fa cup finals premier league titles and more but i think at this stage of the club we're just gonna have to accept the reality and accept that offer so dara burns gets to fulfill his dream and he's sold to real madrid we now have to start our premier league season without dara burns and that definitely cost us we lost our first two games of the season we now desperately need to make signings and fix our team otherwise we will get ready to replace that of Burns, I decided to sign the Japanese Messi Takefusa Kubo. It costed me 31 million, but I still think it could be a steal. But even this signing couldn't fill the void left by Dara Burns' departure. Our struggles in the Premier League continue. We're in the relegation zone right now, and if things continue this way, we're going to be heading right back down to the championship. After just analyzing our squad, I quickly realized that what we need to survive in the Premier League is an experienced goalkeeper. Don't get me wrong, McGinty has been absolutely phenomenal nominal in our route to getting promoted but he's still a player that's growing and getting better for now we need experience someone who can guarantee us the safety of being in the premier league so for 7 million we end up signing nick pop and he's got enough premier league experience to be there and lead our back line and honestly i instantly saw a difference he was making crucial saves he was being a leader and with him in between the sticks we managed to get out of the drop zone we also witnessed takifu sakubo get his first goal for the club boy did that take long but not everything was perfect. We had the chance to win the Carabao Cup, but in the quarterfinals, club captain Betty missed the crucial penalty and we got knocked out because of it. After that game, Callum Berry got so much hate, there were calls for even terminating his contract. It was definitely a tough time, but we managed to fight through, got results in the Premier League, and halfway through the season, we're 11th in the league. Definitely better than being in the relegation zone, and now that we're in 
January with a budget of about 32 million, we can use that money to maybe figure out a way to make a push for top 10. Sadly, one thing that's necessary to improve this team is selling Isco. Age is catching up to him and sadly he isn't the same player he was last season. I know the memories of those free kicks, those ridiculous goals are fresh, but the truth is, we've got an 18 million offer from Barcelona and as a club owner, it makes sense to cash in. Thank you Isco, but it's time to say goodbye. Thankfully, we had planned things out really well and we've got the perfect midfielder to replace Isco with. Matteo Povicic for 28 million, absolutely brilliant. Although we had spent most of our money, I was just looking at the free agent section just in case somebody interesting pops up and you won't believe who we found. Yes guys, Neymar is available for free. One of the most talented players of this generation available for free. Now I know this isn't prime Neymar, it's a 33 year old Neymar that's probably only going to give us one season at the very best, but I still believe it would be a tremendous statement signing a player with his ability. And I know this doesn't make too much sense, but we offered him the highest wages we've ever offered a player, and we've pulled it off. Neymar has just joined my very own creative club. And the truth is, Neymar answered all his critics on his debut. With the help of Kovacic and Neymar signings, we had achieved our goal of finishing in the top half of the table. But there was still something to play for. Remember a few seasons ago, we went on an incredible run in the FA Cup, only to lose the final to Man United? This season, we have a shot at redemption. With our team growing and better than ever, we've made it to the FA Cup final. It's another trip to Wembley. Often in life, you don't get second chances to right your wrongs, but we've just got one. This is an opportunity to win our first major trophy. If we can beat Brentford, the FA Cup is ours. We were putting so much pressure on Brentford in this one. Neymar hit the post not once, but twice. I really thought luck was not going to be on our side and we're going to go trophyless yet again. But this time, losing wasn't an option. David Tyler, who's been here from day one, gets the job no. done. Brilliantly done. Tyler, it had to be him. Tyler with the goal to put us into the lead. And then Neymar showed the world what he's all about. Yes, guys, we've won the FA Cup. This is redemption for that L we took against Manchester United. Winning the FA Cup last season means we're going on a European tour. For the first time ever, S2 TFC is going to be in the Europa League. But we're not here just to participate, get knocked down and call it a day. We're here with our goal being to try and win the Europa League. But for that though, we're going to need to invest in our team and bring in some better players. We start off by renewing our deal with Adidas. And that got us a fair bit of cash. But the big news is we just signed a shirt deal with Emirates. And that got us a lot of money as well. And to be honest, we're going to need the free flights if we're going to be traveling for the Europa League. And gotta say, our Emirates edition kits are pretty fantastic. It was also time to expand our stadium capacity. Our new stadium can fit over 16,000 people in it. Time to begin with our transfer plans. And it starts with the defender, Nordi Mukiel for 24 million. Brilliant business. If we want to win the big trophies, we got to make signings like this. The new Premier League season was now underway. Although it looks like our players are still on holiday because my God, were we terrible. Neymar doesn't look like the same player Kubo has been average. Hate to say it, but maybe we wasted money on Kubo. I miss a certain Dara Burns, but now that we're a Premier League club, imagine if we could sign him back. Dara Burns has fulfilled his dream of playing for Real Madrid. I'm sure if we can make the finances work, he might be keen to return to us and help us win the Premier League, the Europa League, and maybe even more FA Cups. But the issue is Burns is worth about 53 million. The only way we can pull this off is by involving Kubo in the deal. After a lot of negotiation, we agreed 33 million plus Takefusa Kubo for Burns. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the greatest players to play for S2 GFC is finally back where he belongs. And of course, Dara Burns announced his return with a goal. We then created history by scoring our first ever goal in Europe. In our attack this season, it was David Tyler though, who just couldn't stop scoring. And all this led to S2 GFC being third in the Premier League after 20 games and also top of our Europa League group stage table. This is proving to be our best season ever. But we now have a massive decision to make. There is a 42 million offer for Neymar on the table. And I'll be real, similar to Isco, Neymar has kind of fallen off this season. He helped us incredibly to win the FA Cup, but now he ain't the same. And once again, as a club owner, I've got to make the tough choice. We signed Neymar for free. I cannot let go of this opportunity opportunity to make a profit like this. So yes, I decided to cash in on Neymar and he joined Arsenal. With Neymar gone and with us having some cash in the reserves, it's time we look for a replacement. And a certain Martinho Machado was that guy. Portuguese, left winger, pure pace and 
skill, they're calling him the Ronaldo Reject. That is high praise, but we don't know if he's going to be the next Ronaldo. We're just going to have to take a bet on him. For 37 million, we've just signed the next Cristiano Ronaldo. Time to see on the pitch if he actually played like Ronaldo. Meanwhile, before the transfer window shot, we also loaned out Joe Bellingham. Too much competition with Betty Lopez and Kovacic to the club. It's needed for his development. With all our transfer business wrapped up for the season, it's now time for business. We're fighting to complete two objectives. Qualify for Champions League and win the Europa League. We face RB Leipzig in the round of 16 and expectations were high. I really thought our team was good enough to knock them out, but reality hit. We were 3-0 down within the first 45 minutes. Somehow we scored twice to give us a bit of hope for the second leg, but we're still not in a great position. In the second leg at home with the fans by our side, we managed to equalize and take this game to extra time, but then heartbreak in the 120th minute. No! No! No, it can't end like this! Our Europa League dreams have been crushed and all that remains now is the Premier League. Qualifying for top four is a must, otherwise I think we fail this season. Dane Scarlett and Machado were thankfully scoring in every game, but even that was not enough. As with one game to go, we're fifth in the league. Man City had the better goal difference, we really have no chance. Morale was down in the dressing room as we head towards our final game of the season, knowing Champions League is impossible. But to make it worse, I get a message from Max Holmes. One of the greatest players in the history of our club retiring. But hey, at least we get to witness Holmesy score one last time. This has honestly been a tough season, but I guess we're on the right track in just five seasons with a team that competes in the Premier League, Europa League. Next season, we have to take it one step further. Before we head into the next season, I had a small favor from you guys. Over 70% of you guys watching my video haven't subscribed yet, so if you guys can subscribe, that'd be awesome. Last season, we we fail. There's no two ways about it. And that brings about consequences. The top players at our club like Raul Lopez want to leave if we can't take this club to the Champions League. But it's not just Lopez. Even Tyler thinks the same way. And honestly, I completely understand it. If we can't play at the highest level, the top players that we have, they'll want to leave. So it's our job this season to qualify for the Champions League and even try and win the Europa League. The truth is, we're already dealing with consequences from our last season's failures. Adidas don't want to renew with us. They're only interested in Champions League clubs to disrespect. And now we've just lost our kit sponsor, our primary source of funds. Thankfully, New Balance saw an opportunity. They're willing to partner with us and honestly, we don't have much of a choice, so we're taking it. This is also going to be the first season where we're without Max Holmes. He won't be leading the line. He's retired now and is busy training his son to become the world's best player. Can you imagine one day Holmes' son playing for our club? Maybe, who knows? Along with our new kits for the season, we're also unveiling the S2G FC offices. This is where I'm going to be negotiating all the transfers and being as stingy as I can. Let's get some deals done. Alejandro Balde's contract was expiring, so for just 34 million, we've signed a world-class left back. And Balde had an instant impact with assists. My next target for the window is to fix the lack of experience we've got in our team. So I've just signed five-time Champions League winner Casemiro for free. Now I know this isn't the prime Casemiro, but his experience could help us win trophies. We also managed to find Riyad Mahrez's regen, a solid player for squad depth. And the final change we're making this season is it's time for McGinty to be our number one goalkeeper. I think he's ready for this responsibility. With all the changes, we were looking unstoppable. The goals were flying in. Defensively, we held it down. It was perfect. But then, once again, injury crisis. Both Dane Scarlett and David Tyler were out for a few months. The only fit striker we had was Machado, and let's be real, he can't do everything on his own. I really thought due to this injury crisis, once again, we were going to fail our objectives. But then, I received a call from our club legend Max Holmes and all he said on this phone call, he is ready. Max Holmes Jr., the son of club legend Max Holmes, was ready to play for s GFC. He was only 54 rated, 16 years old, but he had incredible pace and a solid knack for goals. Although I still wasn't convinced that Holmes Jr. was ready for the Premier League, but his dad convinced me to give him a chance. With all the injuries, I decided to give Holmes Jr. a chance and you won't believe what he did. Holmes Jr. stepped up big time, but it really really was Machado who took his game to the next level. There's a reason they call him the next Cristiano Ronaldo. And with that, for the first time ever, we were in the fight for the Premier League title. Since we're now in the January transfer window, we also received an offer for Matteo Kovacic. And I think it's going to be a similar story to what happened with Isco and Neymar. We're timing his sale perfectly. The offer is good, and I decided to accept it. Thank you, Kovacic, for your service, but it's time for us to move on. Although, this time, I had a master plan to replace him. Remember Joe Bellingham? We had loaded 
amount to a Serie A club where he's developed and become a fine footballer. Maybe it's time to recall him and make him a superstar in our midfield. And boy was I impressed with Job Bellingham. Seems like a completely different player. You know, we have the new and improved Job Bellingham. Okay, one thing I'll tell you is he is quick. He can drive the ball forward and he's got a pass as well on him. Tyler back inside for Machado and wow, he had incredible confidence. Maybe a bit too much because once I subbed him off in the game and he was really pissed. And honestly, things kind of escalated from there. His ego was a bit too much to handle here. He believed that he was the first name on the team sheet. He also wanted me to strip Callum Berry of his captaincy, which is something I just can't do. So would you believe it? Job betrays us and joins title rival West Ham on deadline day without giving us any time to bring in a replacement. All we can do is put all of this drama behind us and deliver on the pitch. And that's exactly what we did. We were in the race for the Premier League and also in the semi-finals of the Europa League against Juventus. And this time around, Machado did the impossible. Unfortunately though, in the Premier League, Man City got the better of us. And sadly, we were unable to win the Premier League and we settled for second place. But hey, for the first time ever, we're qualifying for the Champions League. But we still have a chance to win S2GFC's first ever European trophy. We need to win this. Otherwise, our best players could lose faith in our club and end up leaving. The final was a do or die and our players gave absolutely everything. Burns, he's broken through and Darren Burns in the Europa League final. It had to be him. Yes, guys, we did the impossible. S2GFC wins the Europa League. Callum Berry lifts the trophy as Joe Bellingham is probably crying somewhere. Our journey to become the world's best club continues. For the first time ever, we're going to be in the Champions League. That means bigger sponsors, more money to spend and a brand new stadium. Look at Adidas. They've come crawling back at us now that we're in the Champions Champions League, but no, 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 I'm not accepting it. Nike have come in with a ridiculous offer. They value S2GFC and you just know Nike are going to make some fantastic kits and so I've signed a deal with them. With all our sponsor deals for the season, we have a record breaking budget of 150 million. Surely this is the season we go for every trophy possible. My first order of business is going to be selling Paulinho to Atletico Madrid. You might be thinking why, but I have a plan to bring one of the world's best players to S2GFC. We've pulled off a record breaking breaking transfer to bring Vinicius Jr. from Real Madrid for 155 million. This is kind of like getting revenge from Real Madrid when they stole Dara Burns from us. But it's still surreal that a club that's only been born seven seasons ago now has one of the world's best players. We've now got a chance to win another trophy. It's the UEFA Super Cup. We're in here because we won at the Europa League. But we're up against PSG. Facing Kylian Mbappe was not easy, but we had Vinicius Jr. too. The game was poised for an electric finish. It was to all, but then Mukiele did this. Mukiele, what have you done? I was so angry at that own goal, and in a fit of rage, I sold Mukiele to our rivals, Man City. Probably not the best of decisions, because I got heavily criticized for it. But I had a plan to replace him. Instead of signing a new centre-back, I'm going to trust Ibsen Rossi, a man who's been here from day one, to be our starting centre-back. And that actually leaves us with money to sign a new midfielder, and boy do we need one ever since Joe Bellingham betrayed us and left. Enzo Fernandez, a World Cup winner Winner for 60 million was our next signing. The squad was absolutely ready to win all big competitions, but once again on deadline day, ah, uh, Dane Scarlett decided to join Manchester City. He believes Man City's gonna give him the best chance to win the Premier League. The only thing I guess we can do is prove him wrong. I'm not gonna lie, this makes me sad because Dane Scarlett is one of the reasons we've made it so far. But hey, that's the harsh reality of owning a club. Players are gonna come, players are gonna leave, the club needs to keep progressing. With Dane gone, I decided to switch to a 4-3-3 formation. Machado and Vinicius thrived in the system. But if we want to win the Premier League, we're going to have to beat Joe Bellingham's West Ham, as well as Mukiele and Dane Scarlett's Man City. Things could get personal. And I'll be honest, playing against West Ham, our focus was pretty much on the personal side. We put in a tremendous amount of rough challenges on Joe Bellingham, and the game ended in a draw. And now we're in a position against Man City where we cannot let things get personal. We've got to beat them. Once again, it was looking like we're going to bottle it, but then home is Junior stepped up big time. We were now top of the Premier League and we've also topped our Champions League group. We marched on with the rest of the season where Machado scored goal after goal and we were getting closer and closer to our ultimate goal of winning the Premier League. Sadly, in the Champions League, we were once again up against PSG. Holmes Junior gave us a bit of hope but then Mbappe crushed everything. Just like that, we were out of the Champions League. The team's morale was down. We were on the verge of bottling the Premier League. We cannot let this happen. We can't do it another season. 
season. In the final game of the season, we play Arsenal and it's a must-win game. Arsenal took the lead and I genuinely thought it was over. But Holmes Jr. wasn't about to accept his fate. We're now Premier League winner. Seven seasons of hard work has resulted in this. And this is in the end. We still have some unfinished business in the Champions League. This is our trophy cabinet at the moment. The only trophy that's left is the big one, the Champions League. To win the Champions League as the club owner, I think I need to provide the club with the tools they need and often that is just money. Of course, tactics and everything, but yeah, primarily, if we want to win the Champions League, I need to secure some big boy sponsor deals. So we renewed our deal with Nike and here's the big news. We signed a record-breaking deal with Red Bull to sponsor our kits and I think they did a great job with the kits. But more than anything, our budget for the season is 200 million. Before making any signings, I wanted to test out my team against Manchester City, who by the way had also signed Joe Bellingham. They want to win the league and they're trying everything to get in my head. Sadly, this time in the Community Shield, Job, Mukiele and Dean got the better of me. I was really annoyed seeing the players we developed costing us trophies. So I thought of getting back at Joe Bellingham. Once again, I'm letting things become personal, but the best way to do this is signing Joe Bellingham's elder brother, Jude. This would really teach Job a lesson. And so we make a massive transfer, signing Jude Bellingham to S2 GFC. The focus this season was the Champions League. With the team we have, I'm confident we can win it all. Although our group is pretty tough because we've got Bayern Munich in it. We were gearing up to face Bayern and get stuck into our season ahead, but then we received shocking news. Breaking news, Martino Machado has made a shock transfer to Real Madrid on deadline day. The reported fee is 200 million, and if the rumors are to be believed, the manager S2G has been caught crying in his office. <laughs> Machado, why? <laughs> The worst thing about Martino Machado leaving us and joining Madrid is that there's no time to bring in a replacement. Without Machado, things did get difficult for us, but the likes of Tyler, Holmes Jr. and Vinicius stepped up big time. Somehow we managed to top our group against Bayern. Shows that in spite of everything, we're still a good team. One thing's for sure, our performances haven't been all that great. It can certainly be better, and I think to do that, we need a new striker. If I want to build the world's best team, I need to sign the world's best striker. And you know what's coming next for 150 million I have gone ahead and signed Erling Haaland from Manchester City. This was a statement, and Haaland was an absolute machine. Everything he touched turned into goals. We knocked out Benfica in the round of 16. Inter World, so no match for us. Juventus put up a fight in the semis, but a rocket from Jude Bellingham sent them packing. Joe Bellingham, oh my word! That might be the best goal of this series, or at least up there as one of the best. Ultimately, we made it to the final of the Champions League. But this Champions League journey took a toll on this team and it led to Job's Man City getting the better of us in the league, which was frustrating. But we have a chance to get revenge as the FA Cup final is between Man City and S2 GFC. This time, Raul Lopez and David Tyler, players who've been here from day one, get the job done. We've lifted the FA Cup and there's only one thing left. But before the Champions League final, Holland picks up a knock and he's not available for this game. I had to now choose between Holmes Jr. and David Tyler to play in this final. Tyler delivered the FA Cup. I feel like it's only fair we give Holmes Jr. his iconic moment. So my gut says to start with Holmes Jr. And that is what I'm doing. This is what we worked eight seasons for. This is the trophy we've been fighting for. Vinicius Jr. made a brilliant run in behind and tapped home our first goal of the game. We almost secured the game, but Holmes Jr.'s effort hits the post. That miss changed the momentum and Dortmund equalized. It all comes down to this. Can club captain Berry create history for s 2 GFC? Callum Berry finding space. Oh, Callum Berry in the 90th minute. Oh, my God. Oh my god, I can't believe this! I cannot believe this! You legit can't write this stuff! Callum Berry has just scored a 90th minute winner! Are you joking? Yes, guys, we've won the Champions League. What a freaking journey this is. Eight seasons of hard work, and here we go. This officially makes me the world's best club owner. Now, if you enjoyed this video and want to see me become the best manager in Premier League history, click here to watch that.